Okay, so we're going to take a look at the plow. And uh, a plow is not necessarily a requirement for floor work. However, if you do want to do more advanced floor work, you're going to want to have some sort of plow. Yeah, the better the plow, the more proficient you will be. And there are going to be some moves where if you don't have a plow, that that move is going to be off the table until you have that particular type of flexibility or range of motion where you can recreate the plow shape. So what we're going to look at is what we need in a plow for floor work and things that you can do in order to become more proficient and loosen up and hopefully help you in your plow journey. So if you already can do a plow, you're good to go. You probably don't need to watch this video unless you're looking just for some additional tips and tricks for your students or just to see if there's something that maybe you don't know. Now, before we get started, I'm not going to say I am a plow whisperer because I am not, but I know a lot about a little and I know a little about a lot. And these are some things that me and Jenny have worked on to try and help our students be um, more successful at getting into a plow. So a plow is something that you do need to work on. It's kind of like a handstand. OK, you need to practice it. Uh, regularly in order for things to loosen up and for you to get deeper into a plow. Now, assuming that you have no medical conditions preventing you from doing this type of shape, we're going to move forward. If you do have something special, like a broken neck or like whatever, you've had a bad car accident or some kind of whatever it is, always check with your doctor first. Make sure that you are approved to do these types of exercises and all of that normal good disclaimer type of stuff, okay? So for floor work, okay, when we do forward rolls, you don't need a plow. But when we do backward rolls, uh, maybe fish flops, uh, things of those, or lateral shoulder rolls, you're definitely gonna wanna have a plow in your back pocket. The great news is, is that we just need a basic plow. We don't need a textbook yoga style plow. So a textbook yoga style type of plow is one that looks very much like a triangle where the hips are stacked over the shoulders, and I'll show you here in a second, where the hips are stacked over the shoulders with a neutral spine, and then your legs are able to come all the way down and touch the floor, and then the floor kind of creates that third, third side of the triangle. We like to have one that's just a basic plow. Uh, we call it more of like an ice cream cone because it looks more like a rounded edge on one of the triangles, okay? I'm gonna do my best to show you, but we'll talk about what we need to do in order to be successful in getting into our plows, okay? So, for the plow that we need, right we're gonna have something like this okay you can see that my back is rounded the legs come down to the floor and then it comes back to the shoulders okay if i were to try and do a more textbook plow okay i'm gonna lower the shirt so you can kind of watch my spine right is i would get my hips stacked over my shoulders yes and then i would be able to get into a neutral spine while i'm stacked yes and then my legs would someday magically touch the floor but they don't even if i really try to engage and squeeze them right so for me i don't have enough uh range in the hips and my hamstrings are a little bit tight and one day it might come to me maybe not maybe it's just the way my bone structure is okay but we're going to look at getting into a plow for the first time okay there's a couple different things that you need to do okay when we're laying in our plow and if you're a little more top heavy the girls are not going to be your fans, okay? Them and gravity together are like a bad combo. They're going to try and choke you out and suffocate you, okay? But by turning your head, you might be able to uh, get a little air in there, yes? So we want to lay down, okay? We're going to have our hands by our hips, and we're going to tuck our pelvis and peel our knees in towards our chest. And then we're going to continue tucking the pelvis and squeezing the abs to roll us back into a plow, okay? And we're going to try and get our... Uh, hips stacked over our shoulders and if you're having a hard time holding this position because you don't have the range and you feel like you want to roll out you're actually going to use your hands to prop yourself up okay this is going to be easier it's like chalking a tire on a hill right you want to prop yourself up so you don't roll out and use the elbows and the triceps pushing into the ground to push yourself up deeper okay keeping your hands out here will actually pull you back out if you don't have that range to get deeper into the plow, okay? And it's more work with a straight arm, trying to push into the ground to keep yourself up, than it is to just get yourself up and catch yourself and work on stacking it here in this position, okay? From here, you wanna try and keep the head straight, and you wanna try and stretch the neck out straight, kind of like your ET, you know, when he gets scared and his neck gets really long and his head pops off the shoulders, yeah? You wanna think about that, try not to, 
tuck your chin because it's going to choke you out. If you have a neutral spine under the neck, you're still able to talk freely and breathe. Once again, if you get deeper and the girls are starting to come after you and choke you out, you might be able to turn your head to the side to get, get some more breath. And that usually works for most people. Okay, so this will be our basic entrance. And then maybe as you roll out, you put your hands behind you. But as you start to roll down, you might work on activating the arms to control your roll as you come out because this engagement of controlling yourself down can also be used to help push you up and into a plow. Okay, so this takes a little bit of practice to get into this position right here and get super comfortable, but all we need is a basic plow. Now I'm going to talk about the progressions here in just a second. Okay, so this is where we are. We're working on trying to get into a plow, find some balance, generate a little bit of stamina and become more proficient at that. Okay, it takes some time. Eventually the neck gets a little bit looser. And now we're going to take a look at um, the progression of legs. Okay, so from a total beginner who's kind of sort of can do a plow to getting to a point where we start to get our feet on the floor and then eventually end in a pipe plow. Okay, so I'm going to break it down before I go into it. So when we first roll back, we want to try and stay in a tight little ball. Maybe the legs are going to be extended over a little bit because what will happen is if you extend the legs beyond your head and your shoulders, that weight will kind of help pull you into the plow deeper. So you're going to need to activate the back of the neck a little bit because as the pressure starts to come back on the back of the head, naturally you're going to want to resist but part of that can help balance you at the same time, right? It's like if somebody pushes your head down, your natural reaction is to push back, right? But what if there was a nice balance between your weight, the weight of your lower half, your body, right? Going over your shoulders, it could keep you there in a balance. But we're gonna come back. Maybe we'll get into a little tuck shape, okay? Maybe that's working for you, okay? Maybe two straight legs trying to touch the ground doesn't work. So maybe what you'll try to do is a little toe tap overhead and I'm going to do all of these for you guys. I'm going to do a little toe tap while in a uh, tuck position. Okay. Then from here, maybe what I'll do is I'll try to straighten two legs out to the side. That doesn't work. It's okay. I'm going to bend one leg because that'll release the hamstrings and it'll allow me to tilt from one side and a little toe tap in a straddle. Yes. And then maybe I'll be in a straddle with flexed feet and I'll be kind of like dink, dink, dink. Yeah. Kind of like I'm teeter tottering left and right through the hips. Yes, and then eventually we straighten the toes or point the feet. Those make contact with the ground, and then we close it into a pike overhead. Maybe the pike overhead with straight feet doesn't work, but you can flex your feet and make contact. Okay, we're working on our progressions, and then eventually we end up in this position. Okay, so I'm going to do it so you can see me as I roll back over here. Okay, so I start to roll back into my plow. Okay, my hands are underneath propping me up preventing me from rolling out, and it's also nice just to prop yourself up, it's nice and easy, okay? So from here, maybe, maybe I can't touch, maybe this is where I'm at, and that's okay. So you're here, you're having a nice little balance session, you're getting into it, okay? Maybe you start to go a little bit deeper and you're like, okay, I wanna see two things. One, how deep can I go comfortably over my shoulders and into the back of the head? So I'm using the head to resist the urge to roll back because this is almost like doing a backward somersault in slow motion. Nobody would do it. Okay. But for maybe I'm right here, I'm getting deeper and then maybe I can try tapping. Okay. That works. Can I get one or the other? Yes. Maybe. Can I get both in this bent leg position? Yeah, that works. That's kind of cool. Okay, great. So what if I want to try and come from a straddle with flex feet? And I'm like, uh, it's not gonna happen, I don't know, okay? So I could bend one leg, yes, and that'll help me come from side to side, and then I could go back and forth trying to teeter. So as I do this, okay, my hips are here, okay, and if I come back to this shape right here, if I use my obliques and I lean my hips from side to side, right, kind of like I'm playing hot potato with my hips, that will also help me get my feet to the ground, okay? It's not like the ultimate solution, but if I just kind of teeter-totter to one side and my hands are here to catch the hips from side to side, I can start to get my feet to the floor, okay? So eventually, we are going from this shape, trying to get one foot at a time, okay, out to the sides, to two feet out to the side, and right now I'm not even straightening the legs, okay? Right now I still have a micro bend, which is okay. 
In a perfect world, we're gonna wanna really squeeze the quads to get straight legs, so we have a more aesthetic looking line, but we're here, okay, we can touch, this is good. Okay, can I start to tighten up this straddle until I can get both of my feet overhead in a flex position? Or maybe you're here with your legs bent, but you got two feet, this is a good start. And then you can work on straightening the legs, keeping the toes where they are, to help get this pike plow shape, yes? And then eventually we get to a point where we have both feet overhead, they are flexed. Maybe I'm working on straightening the legs, squeezing the quads, that's an exercise in of itself, okay? And then maybe eventually we start to work on pointing our feet in this position, okay? If you're like, this is too hard, what if you come back out here to your straddle and then try to point the feet and get the legs straight, right? So this is all different exercises within the plow to make your plow the best plow that the plow can be. And then when you're ready, you bring your hands behind you and you roll out and you're done with your plow and then you come up, okay? So that is your progression of plow, okay? And the different ways to work that progression of plow so we can eventually get into a final plow shape, okay? Now, if you're like, this is really difficult, I still can barely get into the plow, or I can get into the plow, but I'm having a hard time getting the legs to the ground, I'm gonna show you something against the wall here in just a second, the way we can use the wall as a tool to assist us in getting deeper, okay? So like I said, plow is something that you need to dedicate a little bit of time to it. I probably wouldn't spend like an hour doing plow, but I might sprinkle in just like a quick five to 10 minutes here tinkering with the plow, five to 10 minutes here, you know, three days a week, we're always moving, you're already warmed up. Okay, let's see if I can get into a plow really quick. Listen to your body, listen to your neck, okay? So let's look at the next little step here. We're gonna look at the wall and this should help us become a little more proficient at plow and then we'll be able to move in to more advanced content. So if you're having a hard time getting into your plow and staying up, we're gonna use the wall for resistance to push us in, okay? So if you have the ability to kind of sort of get up, but you can't stick it, or you're starting to get into it, but you wanna use the wall to like expand some of the range in the neck, you're gonna sit here and lay down. You'll like scoot yourself nice and close. Yeah, like you got your feet on the wall. Maybe you'll scoot your booty even closer. Yeah, so we're here, right? My butt is in the crack of the wall, right? You can always have a moment here and work on your splits too while you're at it, because why not? Yes, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna use my feet to push myself back. It's almost like I'm kind of doing a hip bridge on the wall. And if this is working, maybe, maybe, depending, right? I'm gonna walk my shoulders in a little bit closer, okay? I still wanna be engaged. Don't just sink in, because it's gonna compress, yes? But think about pushing the shoulders and squeezing the blades together so you can get a little bit of lift, okay? From here, you can prop your hands up underneath your hips, and you can use one of the legs to help push you a little deeper, right, to kind of expand and push into the neck. Or you can take one of the legs off, right, and now we're starting to get into our plow, and this pushes us deeper. And if that helps, then you can work on pushing and balancing, but you've always got the wall there to fall back on and push back off up. Now, the caveat here is that you do need to be a little bit careful because if you were not ready for it and you push too hard, it will definitely put you into your plow. And if you're not ready for that, it could push you a little bit further than you want to be. So keep that in mind when playing with this technique. But this is definitely a good way. If you're having a hard time getting deeper, using the wall to help push yourself and get more stacking of the hips over the shoulders and then gently bringing the legs overhead Remember, if the foot is extended over the head, you have weight pulling you into the pose, and you can use that to your advantage to pull you deeper, and then maybe you have two, okay? And then, really, there's no graceful way to get out. I don't know, maybe you could be like, you can like push, like you're swimming on the floor or something like that, right? Now, the next one, I said, and the last one, is our head is gonna be facing the wall. So if you can get into the plow, but maybe you can't get your feet to the floor, or you're looking for a way to kind of open up the hips and get the hamstrings a little bit more loose. Is that technical, Tam? A little bit more loose, yes. <laughs> right? And here we go. Everybody's got squeaky brakes outside of our building, if you can't hear them already. Okay, so maybe 
you're getting to a point. You're going to have to find out what your spacing is, okay? You can go into a plow, you get your feet on the wall, you're like, okay, this is kind of cool, I can hold my plow. This is about where I'm typically at when I'm off of the floor, right? So you're going to come in, you're still going to prop yourself up, maybe you'll straighten the legs. And then what you're going to start to do is walk the feet down the wall, yes? And this can help you get the feet even closer to the floor. You could even bend your legs to try and go deeper into your plow, right, to get a deeper stretch and see how much more rounding you could get. Maybe you could get the knees to the floor. I'm always working on that, right? But using this as a tool here, just to get yourself deeper, right? Maybe what I need to be doing actually is coming in here and getting into my textbook plow, right? Look at that. The stacking is great. I can see it over there. That's why I'm not looking at you. <laughs> and then working on walking my legs down without breaking this. Come on. The hamstrings are good. It's the hips that don't like the hips. The hips definitely lie. They lied to me. Okay. Ooh, wait, that's about as deep as I can get into my textbook plow while trying to maintain a neutral spine. Come on, just a little deeper, Brandon. Ooh. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. With pressure. Okay. With great power comes great responsibility. Boom. And there we go. Okay. So hopefully... Those little bits and pieces there will help you conquer your plow. And um, yeah, I think that's good. That's a good start right there. Let me know if you have any additional questions, right? Like I said, I am not a plow whisperer. I do not have the solution to everybody's issue, but hopefully everything that I just provided in this little plow tutorial will be of use to you, your students, or anybody else in the future. I'll see you in another video.